Hi everyone, welcome back to Game Maker Cast. In today's lesson, I wanted to introduce state machines into our simple platformer. This is going to be necessary moving forward to keep our code organized and maintainable, but also it's going to help when we get to the animations and the effects part of our platformer. First, let's quickly do a quick recap of what a state machine is. In the general term, a state machine allows us as a developer to keep track of the current state of an object. For example, if we were dealing with a door, we could have a couple different states where our door is closed or opened, and then we could also have two more states where our door is opening or being closed. These allow us to quickly determine what's happening in each of these states, and we can apply the animations or the effects as needed. So actually, let's dive right into Game Maker Studio, and let's figure out how we can make these states. How I like to do it is I like to create a script. I'm going to right-click on scripts and say create script, and I'm just going to name this SCR state. Actually, let's name it states. Now in here, I can put all of these states I want for my game. So again, if we're doing the player, I'll have my player states in here. Now, if I'm also doing the treasure chest, I will also have my treasure chest states in here. And Game Maker is automatically going to include these, so we don't actually have to call this script from anywhere in our code. Now, to create a script, we sorry, to create a state, we're going to have to use a special variable called an enumerator. And we can access this variable by just typing enum. And now we just type in the name of the variable that we want. And I'm going to work with the player's vertical state. So I want enum player vertical state. And inside the curly braces, these are going to be the different states that we're going to be able to track. So right now, I want on the ground. I want jump, jumping, and then falling. So these four states are the ones that I'm choosing to follow. What Game Maker Studio is going to do is it's going to take these states and it's going to turn them into an integer value where ground is going to equal zero, jump one, jumping two, and then falling will be three. Now, even though the Game Maker is turning those into integers, we as a programmer just get to refer to them as the actual name that we gave them. So it doesn't matter when we come back and we add new ones, it's just going to be referred to the name instead of an integer value. Now that we have our vertical state here, let's take a look at our player object. Inside the player object in the create event, we're going to need a variable to hold that state. So this is pretty easy. We just can say state, and because we're dealing with the vertical state, we'll say state underscore vertical equals, and now we can access the enumerated value. Well, all we need to do is type in the enumerated variable name, which is player vertical state. So we'll say player vertical state dot, and let's, let's go with the on ground state. So we're just gonna set our vertical state to on ground. So let's see in our, let me add a new event just for some debugging here. In the dry GUI, we'll just say draw text at our current position of X and Y, and then let's draw state and then add the state vertical in the string. So now if I actually press F5 and I run the game, you can see that the state is going to be zero. Now what we want to do is transition the state depending on what we're doing in the vertical movement section here. So obviously we're going to have a jump and jumping, and then we'll have a falling down, and our state zero is on the ground. So let's work on some transitions here. What we'll do in the step event, let's make a new region at the very top, and let's call this vertical um, vertical state. Let's end the region, and now all we have to do is figure out what state we're in and then how we can transition. Now we can write a whole bunch of if statements, but what I'm gonna use is a switch statement, and I'm gonna switch based off the vertical, sorry, the state vertical. So this is just saying if the state vertical is equal to the player vertical state of on ground, then what I want to do is run the code inside the case statement. So for example, if we take a look at the horizontal movement, or sorry, the vertical movement down here, when we are on the ground, we currently set, 
the current jump to the maximum jump. So we can start moving some of this code out. So let me just go all the way up to the top and we'll work as we go and then we'll come back down and clean it up. So when we're on the ground, we want our maximum jumps to equal, or sorry, the current jump to equal the number of times that we are able to jump. Now, when we are on the ground, you saw when I played the game, we have the option to fall off a ledge. So that right there is gonna be a transition. So we can do a simple check just to see if anything is underneath us. We could say if not place meeting, sorry about my spelling, at the X position, Y position plus one. So we're checking right below us. And we are saying if we don't find the object solid, then I'm gonna assume that our vertical, so our state vertical is equal player vertical state falling. Because there is no solid object on the ground, we are then gonna switch our vertical state to falling. So if we run the game, we should check to see if this transition works. So we had the state of three because we are falling. And actually we're gonna need one more state right now because we're not checking the falling state. So let's actually finish this and then we'll come back to that. So in here we have the on the ground where we can jump and then we can do our place meeting. So we're checking for a sell up object. Let's also do the jump itself. So we'll say if not, sorry, if keyboard check pressed and we're gonna check for the key jump. If we press the jump key, then what we wanna do is change the state to a jump state. So we'll say state vertical equals player vertical state dot jump. Now we could just have the player jump up and then change the state to jumping, but this will give us just a tiny bit more flexibility. So now that we're done with that, let's say if the vertical state is equal to player state dot jump then in here what we want to do is run some jump code so we can say if the jump current is bigger than zero then we want to allow the player to jump and so just like before we would say jump current minus equals one our vertical speed on our player equals the jump force that we assigned. And now we have to tell our player that we are no longer jump, but we have, we, we are jumping. We could have changed the jump. I'll just keep it as jumping for now. So we'll say vertical state, sorry, state vertical equals player vertical state jumping. So now that we are in the air, let's make sure that we cover this case here. Now, when we press the jump key, there's no transitioning to any other state. So we're actually done with this here, but we'll say if the state vertical is equal to player vertical state dot jumping, now we can also do the check for on the ground and stuff like that. However, the one thing that I found is when we're dealing with jumping and falling, we're kind of checking the same thing. So in the switch statement, we could also say if the state vertical is equal to player vertical state dot jumping, or it is also equal to player vertical state dot falling, then also run the code inside this case statement. So if it's this case or this case, it's gonna run whatever is inside here. It doesn't really matter. So here's where we can do our checks to figure out how to get out of jumping and how to get out of falling. So the first thing we're gonna do is once we reach the top of our jump, we need to say that our player is now falling. So we could say if our vertical speed is bigger than zero, meaning that we're going to be going down, then our state vertical equals the player state dot falling. So now we are falling back to the ground. Now let's see if we can transition from when we are on the ground from jumping or falling. We could say if the vertical speed is equal to zero, so we're not moving up or down, and our state vertical is equal to player, player vertical state dot falling. So we know that we have jumped or we have fell down from a ledge. 
then our state will be equal to player state on ground. So once again, we have no vertical movement and we just came from the falling state, then we know that we can set our state to on the ground. Finally, we wanna make sure that we are able to jump more than one, so we'll have that double jump in there. We could say if the jump underscore current is bigger than zero, so we are allowed to jump, then we could also say if the keyboard check pressed, key underscore jump so we've pressed the jump key and we are able to jump then we say state vertical equals player state dot jump let me fix my alignment and so if we press the jump key we'll set our state to jump which will cause us to go up here and we do another check here but we could actually take that out i guess it doesn't really matter um, and then we take one away from the jump, set our vertical speed, and then set our state. So now that we actually have that, we're going to have to come down to our vertical movement and clean this up because we have a lot of duplication. We always need to make sure that we're applying gravity to our player, and we need to make sure that there is a solid object below us and then move towards it. Now we can get rid of this information here and we don't need to track whether we are in the air for double jump. Now, that was a lot of code, but we're left with a pretty simple vertical movement code now. Everything's happening within our state machine here. So let's actually hit F5 and see if our state machine is working. We're on the ground, so our state is zero. If I jump, it should go to one, or sorry, two, then three quickly. And you can see it's very, Actually, it's one, then two. It's very quick. But if I go at the top here, actually, let's go to the top. This zero should turn to a three. And actually, I think the easier way to do this is going to be in the step event. Let's just say show debug message, and let's show the state vertical. All right, so let's do, let's run this again. And you can see that our state here is zero. When we jump, it goes one, two, then three. So let's go up here. We should see a zero to three and then back to zero. And we do, and we'll just quickly tab off here. Actually, I guess I'll have to end the game after I jump. If I scroll up right here, you can see that jump state is only in there for one frame. And then we go to our jumping state. So actually that brings us to the end of this video we are now set up to add in special effects for when we hit the ground from falling or when we start to jump. And also we can start adding animations and we can actually probably start doing some sound effects as well. Just kind of bringing this scene all together so we can start adding more levels to our platformer. Sometimes state machines are not so easy to implement, but once you start using them, I hope you'll find that they fit right into any project that you're working on. I'd also like to thank Paul Dalton and my anonymous Patreon people. Thank you for supporting me, and if you would like to get early access to the videos or help me decide what should be worked on next, then join the club. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks a lot.